This is gonna come as a bit of a surprise. I've absolutely nothing to sell you. I'm doing this video because I love audio and I wanna share my love of audio and I'm building this website to see whether it's sustainable. Part of the reason I wanted to review the Sonos port is because there isn't currently a review about it and I was interested in how this streamer advances on the previous iteration. Also because when I was looking on YouTube, I was noting that all the review sites were called such as audio review, sound advice, and then when you click on those reviews, you notice they're just a shop and they're just trying to sell it to you. So unsurprisingly, they're not gonna be very impartial and they're not gonna really offer a very balanced review, which is another reason why I wanted to do the review of the Sonos port. So this film is an effort at a rounded and balanced assessment of the Sonos port. Otherwise, what's the point? So before we talk about the Sonos port, we need to talk about its forebear, the Sonos Connect. Now, this is now a legacy product, Sonos say, from May of this year. The Sonos Connect that I used to own myself was a streaming box around $300, £300, that you could add on to your Hi-Fi and add streaming functionality to your existing setup. So playing music, digital music stored on your MAS drive, your network attached storage drive, other computers over the network, or playing your music from your internet streaming services, Tidal, Spotify, Deezer, Quobars. And you could either use it with its DAC and sending analog output to your hi-fi, or you could use it just simply as a streaming transport and use your own DAC using one of its two digital outputs. Now the Connect was useful in the regard that it used to have a digital coaxial output and an optical output. So you could use either depending on what you had free or what your system was capable of. The Sonos port is still a streaming box. It's an upgraded design with better DAC and better streaming functionality and features. But you can use it either as a single streamer alone or you can use it paired with other Sonos speakers like the Play 5 or the Play 3. A neat feature with Sonos is that either of these devices can play different music from your network separately or you can add the speakers all to, to, together and play music in disco mode so the music from one speaker or one device is the same as another device and Sonos does this really really well because the sound syncs perfectly unlike some other network devices like the Google infrastructure which creates just ever so slight lag. The port can be connected either wirelessly via Wi-Fi or over Ethernet. It loses the optical digital output that the Connect had, but it gains a trigger output, which means that you don't have to keep turning on the rest of your gear. As soon as a signal comes from your port, it will turn on the rest of your Hi-Fi and it works by sending a signal from a 3.5 millimeter jack into another 3.5 millimeter jack in your hi-fi if your hi-fi uses a compatible connection. This is actually a pretty neat feature because you don't have to turn your hi-fi on like you're turning on a helicopter, pressing lots and lots of switches. Similarly to the Connect, the port keeps its analog input, which means you can add a CD player or a turntable and feed that into your hi-fi or you can send that wirelessly over the network to other devices or again you can sync the devices together the your play speaker and your port for instance and play music off those devices your cd player 
in disco mode. I've got to say that I think the Port looks better than the Connect. It's better made. The Connect was made of a kind of hard, brittle plastic. This Port is made from a really nice soft touch plastic. But saying that, the price has gone up to $450 or 400 pounds. An added feature that you didn't get with the original Connect when it came out was the ability to use alarms. So you can make the Sonos infrastructure play a track from your network or your streaming service to wake you up or do whatever you wanna do. Another thing is, is that when the Connect came out, you used to need to use a Sonos bridge to mesh all your devices together, which was a separate box. But now you can do everything you need to do just in the Sonos port, which was a feature they later added to the Connect as well. One of the best things about Sonos is its app and you won't find many better ones. Also the ability to add pretty much every streaming service there is under the planet. So you've got Tidal, Quobuzz, Amazon Music, Deezer, Spotify. I think that's all, isn't it? Amazon Music. We could go on, but you'll, if you've got a service that you need to stream from, this device will do it. Some of the competition for the port. First off, we've got the Yamaha WXC50 which is a streaming pre-amplifier and a streamer in one box. It's Wi-Fi capable. You can connect it physically using Ethernet connection. It is also a pre-amplifier, so you can connect power amplifiers to it and then from there connect those to your speakers. It's got a digital coaxial output, so you can send music to your DAC or you can use its analog outputs straight into your hi-fi. Another competing product which is similar to the Sonos port is the Alu Digi1 Signature Streamer. It's more of a techie audio file type streamer. You need to know a little bit more about some of the parts of the device rather than simple plug and play functionality you get with Sonos. I have actually reviewed this stream before and if you check out the link at the end of this video you can watch my video about it. In short, it's based on a Raspberry Pi mini computer which is connected to some top boards that have digital outputs that turn it into a streamer. It's got an Ethernet connection so it's not Wi-Fi capable and it has two power supplies, one for the clean digital outputting board and another for the dirty Raspberry Pi based board. Because it's actually based on a computer, you have to load the software to it, the software that is going to be your proprietary control app or whatever interface you want to use. And for this purpose, there's a little memory card that you plug into it. I did find that you are somewhat limited with the software that you can use with the Digi1 signature. I use one called Volumio or Volumio, depending on how posh you are. And I didn't find it anywhere near as good as the, the ports, the Sonos ports app. So in these comparisons, I'm using the Digi1 signature with the Alu Shanti power supply. The Digi1 signature and the Shanti together are next to damn it, the same price as the Sonos port. So against these devices, I'm using an Inuar Zenith Mark II, which isn't to be regarded as the best you can get, but it's just a benchmark upon which to test these cheaper streamers. So as regards to the test system that I'm using for this review, I'm using my ubiquitous Cyrus and PMC system. I'm going from these streamers, the Yamaha, the Alu Digi1 signature, and the Sonos port via coaxial into the digital input of the cord cutis that I use, and that goes into the rest of the hi-fi, obviously. 
I'm also using a Jade 2 electrostatic headphone system comprising the J2 headphones and the J2 amp from Hi-Fi Man. Again, I'm sending the cutest into this headphone amplifier. I'm also using an Isotech Aquarius power conditioner in this test. And if you wanna check out my video for this unit, click on the link in the end screens to this video. One of the things that's quite obvious about the Sonos Port is that it has a nice, rich, powerful tonal sound, a fat sound that I'm going to call thickness projection. A mid-focused and upper mid-focused quality, a kind of meat on the bones approach that is not anywhere as watery as the Sonos Connect was in this respect. Can I say watery as a descriptive? Well, to hell with it, I just have, haven't I? The Sonos Connect also had a reputation for being jittery, whether that's fair or not. So these changes that we find with the port are really, really welcome and give this unit a boost over its forebear. I can't say that it's as good as the Digi One Signature, which just has a bit more involvement in the music you're going deeper into the music i know that sounds cliche but it's it's got a kind of deafness in delicacy with the port comparatively you feel like the sound has been squashed into a narrower space that it's been reined in and compressed certainly though i did find that the sonos port has a less gritty and grainy sound compared to the Yamaha, which translates into less compression, a bigger sound stage and more openness. And that allows the detail and the music to come through. Against the Zenith, there is a less delicate sound. There's less micro details in the treble. And again, depth perception is is not as good anywhere as good as the as the zenith but again this is unsurprising because there's a five times price multiple there i've got to say that using the j2 system the differences were less marked than through my hi-fi uh, unsurprising because we're, diff we're talking differences in price here but i found that the delicacy deafness was there there was more accuracy with the digi1 signature pinpointed instrumentation and 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 uh, acoustics in the track very slightly over the port, but we are talking small differences and nuanced differences here. What you do notice is that the base model of the port comes back in comparison to the Digi1 signature. What I was talking about in its thickness projection is, is obvious here. Against the Digi1 signature, swapping to the Zenith with its USB out into the Qtis, I noticed gains again in micro detail, depth perception and soundstage. Now I did do comparisons of my Chord Qtis using its analog outputs into my Hi-Fi compared to using the analog outputs of the Sonos Port and use its, using its internal DAC. And I was pretty surprised with the results, to be honest, much, much better than I thought I would get out of this port. The DAC of the Sonos port is surprisingly punchy with bass and treble detail and accuracy. A little bit woolly with bass in my system, 
Also, you do notice over a much more expensive DAC that there's just a level of open placement of the music. I'd call it placement layering of the music. You hear where those instruments should be in the music, in the different levels and layers of the music. But considering you're actually buying a streamer come DAC in the port, and it is in that respect compromised, the DAC for its price is, is decent. So if I had to say, do I think the port works well as a streamer and DAC at its price? Absolutely, you can't have any grumbles with it. The only real big issue is that Sonos haven't updated the port to play high-res music. One of the bugbears of the Sonos Connect was that it could only play 48 kilohertz, 16-bit music, which is about the same quality as CD. Now, this isn't actually a disadvantage if you've got a good DAC in your system because a lot of the quality of the sound is dependent on the DAC, obviously your amplification and your speakers. But it's more of a case of if you've downloaded high-res music and you can't play it, and the Sonos app won't allow you to play the higher resolution music, it just comes up with an error. That's a big disadvantage and a big turn off from buying this product. As I said in my written review, I can't help thinking that Sonos is doing themselves out of a big chunk of the market by not allowing this product to play high res music. And there's no downsampling either. There's no downsampling through the software to allow it to play CD quality such that you could play those high res files through your Sonos app. When this product was being advertised, it wasn't mentioned as something that was going to be added. And it really ought to have been, and I really sincerely hope in the future that Sonos add it, because it's gonna surely restrict the amount of sales of this, of this streamer, and it's a good streamer. So why wouldn't they add in this functionality? Also, the fact that it's not particularly a difficult or technologically difficult thing to add on a streamer nowadays, considering you see so many budget streamers and so many premium streamers that have the ability to handle higher resolution formats. So I actually think that this unit is gonna really appeal to someone that's got Sonos speakers at the moment, or they're looking as a first foray into streaming with a CD collection that they want to rip, and they're not too bothered about higher resolution. One of the things you might be worrying about in buying this product is the recent press articles about Sonos and their legacy products. The article was to say that certain products within the range would cease to be supported for firmware updates from May and also that these products would not work with newer products like the port so if you're buying this to add to a system that includes some of these legacy products, you might wanna check what you have and whether there is compatibility issues. After this press release, loads of people were up in arms and there's been quite a few articles in the media about the, le these legacy products and them not being able to work together and how it will alienate lots and lots of customers. And the CEO recently put out a press release to say that Sonos are actually working on allowing older legacy products to tie in with newer products like this port. And because Sonos is one of the most uh, technically involved with app development, I wouldn't have any concerns about buying newer gear and tying it in with, with older products. But you may want to keep an eye out on the Sonos website for latest developments in this respect. But in regard to the actual units that are no longer being supported and are being deemed to be having legacy status, they are the Sonos Connect manufactured 2011 to 2015, the Connect Amp, again 2011 to 2015, all zone players, which were the forebears of the, the Sonos Connect, Play 5 Generation 1 speaker, and the CR200 controller which was a little kind of iPod style controller for controlling your Sonos system. 
I can only keep doing my reviews if people subscribe and I get more interest in what I'm doing because that enables me to substantiate requests for further products from manufacturers.